Okay, my name is Aditya Harihari, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how frequently playing violent video games, particularly first-person violent video games, tend to cause people in general to be involved in war, to be involved in those violent activities. There are two reasons that support this fact. Number one, when people play, uh, when people frequently play these games, they get used to the environment rather quickly because they're controlling the first person shooter. So it's easier, so it's easy to control uh, the, the way they handle the weapon and other aspects of the character. Uh, number two, uh, the more uh, people play violent video games, uh, the more they, their mood changes because of all the surroundings that go around in a particular game. Uh, they tend to follow whatever the character does, does as well. And, um, and the character goes through a violent uh, time, so there's a lot of, there's loneliness, there's, uh, there's not too much social activity, uh, people aren't happy, those kinds, of, uh, those kinds of moves. And during those two, uh, during the, for each of those two facts, I'm going to give a real life example. Uh, each example has taken place seven to eight years ago. Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, number one, uh, again, let me repeat that in case you didn't catch it. Uh, number one reason, uh, the more people play uh, these violent video games, the more likely they are to get used to the shooter's environment because of, uh, of the control that they have on the character. And an example of this took place seven years ago in, the, in Sandy Hook Elementary School, back in Newton, Connecticut. The shooter, whose name was Adam Lanza, uh, and this is a brief history by the way, uh, killed uh, 20 children and 6 adults during the incident, and it, all before killing himself. And 6 days after that incident, uh, the police investigated his house, and uh, the newspaper called Daily Mail, in uh, an article online, published information about the investigation. and. The police and uh, what was posted was the police found out from uh, from his parents that Lanza loved to play the game called Combat Arms, first-person shooter game, and that he played over 4,900 matches over a span of 500 hours, recording 83,000 total kills, 22,000 of those headshots. And so the big takeaway from this is that because Lanza played that many hours in that many matches of the game Combat Arms, he quickly got used to the way the shooter, the, the way the shooter's world works. And that's what inspired him to do what he did back in, uh, back in Sandy Hook Elementary School. Uh, the second point is that uh, frequently playing these kinds of games tends to uh, change people's mood. They experience sudden mood changes. And an example of this is the uh, movie theater shooting that took place in Aurora, Colorado back in 2012. Uh, the shooter named James Holmes killed uh, 12 people, injured 70 other people before killing himself. And about six days after that incident, the police also searched his house. And uh, in an article published by New York Times, uh, the results of the police investigation were posted. Uh, what the police found out from his parents was that, uh, that Holmes loved to play the two games, uh, World of Warcraft, and Diablo 3, and that over, over time, as he continuously played those two games, he started experiencing sudden mood changes. Uh, normally, he had friends. Um, because of those games, he was lonely. He stopped being social. And he used to smile a lot while talking. And uh, during, during class presentations, he would generally give jokes. Well, he, he, well as time when flew by, he didn't. He stopped smiling, he stopped giving jokes. And so the big takeaway from this is that uh, because of those mood changes that he experienced, he started having the mind to kill. And so in conclusion, because of these two reasons, uh, people in general tend to become more involved in violent activities because, uh, because uh, violent video games tend to influence them in ways that normally they wouldn't have been affected by. Thank you.
All right, um, I'm going to say this early on so that maybe we can avoid this in a couple of the other speeches. So if you are scheduled to speak today, you might want to pay attention to this. If you start your proposition with the word how, it stops being a declarative statement. For instance, I'm going to talk about how frequent video game use can cause a particular problem. That makes it sound like it's an expository speech rather than a declarative statement and an argument. So the language matters. You want to be careful about that. You did preview what the secondary points were going to be. Uh, that was helpful. Your, your proposition is a little complicated because you do have some reservations built into it, although they never become a big part of your argument uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the body of the speech, so I'm not sure why you went to all that extra effort on that. Uh, you have the two points that you're developing. All of your evidence is based around two examples. So you've got an example for the first point and an example for the second point. So there's no statistical information really. We don't have any expert testimony. Uh, there's some factual data about the events that took place, but I think you hurt your credibility a little bit with a couple of the things because uh, you don't really have the data on this. For example, um, Adam Lanza, the guy who did the shooting at Sandy Hook, you said his parents talked about these things. Well, I know his one parent didn't talk about it because that was the first victim of his killing spree, his mother, that he killed and took the weapon from in the first place. And then on the second one, uh, when you talked about um, uh, Holmes, uh, before he killed himself, well, he didn't kill himself. He's in prison right now uh, and under psychiatric evaluation in this process. So you've got two pieces of data that are inconsistent with what I happen to know about this particular situation, anybody else who knows it, they're going to be saying, well, if he's not getting that right, maybe he's not getting other things right. And so you want to be careful about that. I know that you're just trying to paraphrase the examples, but if you miss something important like that, that could be a problem. They could trip people up from uh, listening to you because they're just going to dismiss you as not being sure. You're talking out of your, you know, off the top of your head instead of actually having done some research on it. So the examples I think are, are okay, but that's all you've got is those two examples. If there's any other re-explanation as to why these guys went off that doesn't have to do with the uh, amount of control that they had in the game or the frequency with which they played the game, that seems to undermine your argument because you're basically making a cause-effect claim and you're attributing causation to these two particular events and you've only got the singular example. I think that that makes that argument really subject to uh, counter arguments both about the particular examples that you're dealing with, that both of these guys were psychotic before they played any video games and the video games might have contributed to their psychosis, but there might have been other problems that were going on as well, or for instance, that this is not indicative of people who are not having any particular problem, uh, particularly based on the number of people who play these games. I don't know what the worldwide uh, number of people playing uh, World of Warcraft is, or Diablo 3, but my guess is it's more than one, and as a consequence, unless we see a whole bunch of other people who are influenced in the way that you're describing, it would be hard for us to make the inference that you're talking about. I do think that you do a nice job presenting to us and speaking to us in a normal voice, uh, trying to present your arguments in a way that uh, we can relate to. I think that part is, is solid. Like I said, I think you need to have more, you need to have your uh, examples a little bit more sound and you need other evidence to support your position. All right, thank you.